Joe Rogan had something to say about the fight while we were all watching it, and Usyk's literal breaking of his nose demonstrated that Tyson Fury was never unbreakable. His live reaction to the battle was candid. It's strange that Joe Rogan has been discussing Tyson Fury, because he's an undersized heavyweight of beauty and Tyson is as large a heavyweight as you'll ever see at 69 long. Most likely because he thought he was superior to Usyk in combat, saying things like, I think Tyson Fury has that big advantage that alone with the talents he has might surely put Usyk down in two. Until the fight actually took place, we may have all agreed with Rogan at some point. The battle defied expectations and common sense, producing a spectacle that had spectators on the verge of. In an astonishing turn of events, the towering figure Fury, often considered to be the more formidable fighter, lost to Usyk, the skilled fighter, who emerged victorious. Confronting the pre-fight narrative that Usyk's superior technique would dominate the match by using his bulk, Fury showed off his superb boxing skills from the opening bell. Fury was able to control the fight's pace and rhythm, demonstrating his early domination. He also managed the distance while landing accurate jabs and powerful body blows. Fury started to taunt Usyk, demonstrating his dominance over the bout not just with his physical prowess but also with his strategic acumen. Fury was confident in his approach and used this as a way to further reinforce his control. While this helped Fury to block Usyk's advances with quick punches, it also put him in danger. Fury would often fight from the back foot, frequently close to the ropes or in the corners. The fight's momentum began to change in the seventh round, with Usyk unfazed by Fury's early dominance, stepping up to the plate and applying pressure to his unrelenting opponent. Ulysses' aggressive strategy proved to be successful as he capitalized on Fury's inclination to retreat and his relentless forward pressure, landing more overhand lefts. The ninth round proved to be the crucial part of the fight, with Usyk taking advantage of Fury's defensive stance to unleash a powerful punch. Momentum was building strong blows that started with a precisely timed straight left that struck Fury's chin and sent him sprawling into the ropes. Usyk chased Fury around the ring without missing a beat. The round's climax occurred when Fury, obviously stunned, staggered and eventually lost consciousness after landing a series of brutal blows. Fury battled to regain his composure as Usyk maintained his attack. Collapsed to the canvas, to which Joe Rogan responded, you saw that you all see that that's amazing power from Usyk right there to knock out a giant like it was nothing agile with back fat like that. The referee's 10 count, but Fury was able to stand up and beat it, and the bell rung just in time to spare him. I couldn't detect that Fury's trousers were falling down or go back to that photo. The intense sequence that saved Usyk from a potential knockout highlighted his fortitude and ability to capitalize on pivotal times. Following all 12 rounds, the judges' scores showed a hotly disputed. The verdict established U.S. Geik as the first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis, with two judges scoring U.S. Geik's victory, double 112 and double 113 and one judge scoring Fury double 113 Zizvik's victory over Fury in 1999, which was the first in the four-belt system era, was only a demonstration of his skill, resolve, and tactical brilliance. Joe Rogan said after the fight which was, shattering his nose, as you can see by his attempts to straighten his face during the battle. This match not only demonstrated the unpredictability of boxing, but Fury's impressive boxing technique was showcased, but Usyk's unrelenting pressure and crucial ninth round charge were what really showed how important flexibility and mental toughness are. It, in the end, cemented his legacy in boxing history. If you look at the rolls of fat off his back, that back fat is tremendous. Peak male performance, that is, the bodybuilder beats the bodybuilder. Team. After the thrilling ninth round knockout of Alexander Usyk, you guys have a thing for the Gypsy King. He's a crazy character and the best father ever. I like that guy. Using his unwavering work ethic and accuracy, Usyk kept up the pressure on Tyson Fury throughout the fight, and in the later rounds, he was able to outbox Fury to secure a historic victory. By winning, Usyk accomplished a unique achievement and joined a select group of male fighters who, over the course of four bell eras, had gained undisputed prominence in two weight divisions. He currently stands with Terence. After the bout, Tyson Fury, who had lost the first match, saw that Crawford and Naoya in UE had already won every cruiserweight title before advancing to the heavyweight division. Despite the judge's ruling, Fury firmly declared his desire to exercise his contractual right to a rematch, a testament to his legendary career. He claimed he thought he won a couple rounds of the rematch, but I think I won. 
He also made a contentious comment in the rematch, implying that geopolitical circumstances may have affected the judge's ruling. I think we both gave it our all in the boxing match and we came out on top, but you know, his country is at war and some people are siding with him. He won most of them. Without a doubt, I prevailed in that battle against the country at war and I'll be back. I received a second chance and I firmly felt that I was the best version of myself I doubt I could have done any better. Better yet, maybe if they had instructed me to write you down during the previous two rounds, I could have gone out and attempted to fight him and try to remove him from there on my own. Accomplished the best I could, you know it's good, just end I apologize for the rematch, gentlemen. You know we're just over our battle judging by my expression, I'm really upset. Fury's remarks implied that perhaps the country's current conflict with Russia had influenced him. He had gone to the hospital with a broken jaw and was also busted. Many people felt that the judge's decision to award U.S. Geik a victory diminished his unquestionable performance in the ring. I accept your offer of a 70-30 split to fight. Still, there were differing opinions on this statement. With you on April 29th at Wembley, but you'll guarantee to give to Ukrainians right away following the fight on a daily basis. For his part, Yusik showed no reluctance in. The fact that he is prepared to fight Fury again shows his confidence in sportsmanship, further establishing his rights to a rematch respect as a strong and noble champion, Joe Rogan recently discussed the present situation and offered his opinions on a possible fight between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Boxing legend Mike Tyson highlighted the intrigue of a match between the two combatants in the heavyweight class, pointing out their contrasting styles and physical characteristics. I think the battle between Tyson Fury and Usyk is really exciting because he is so different from the other fighters. He is really tall and has a long range of motion. Excellent jab, and he's quite skilled at utilizing distance to secure whatever tactic he uses, regardless of whether he can escape the large bombs in the long reach, but not the. No, no, Rogan's remarks highlighted Fury's physical advantages and boxing prowess, highlighting the long, lean type that Usyk would encounter. Though the local clash had not yet materialized here, the enthusiasm surrounding a Fury versus Usyk battle had gotten the best of us, especially in British boxing. I'm 32 years old, strong, and ready for this battle. I'm hoping to sign a 10-bout deal because I'm not going anywhere. I'm in the best shape of my life. Joe Rogan also mentioned that the excitement for this fight would increase if Anthony Joshua defeats him. Going nowhere, I come in for all you out there, I'm the baddest man on the world. Loses to Yulianov in their rematch, then Anthony Joshua standing in the heavyweight class would be severely damaged outside of the ring. Tyson Fury has been candid about his health issues. Tyson Fury has been under Rogan's careful observation as it appears we all recall that his quest to conquer personal issues and return to the pinnacle of boxing is both inspirational and moving. After a highly anticipated match in Saudi Arabia, Tyson Fury defeated UFC heavyweight champion Francis via a controversial split decision, sparking much discussion and passionate comments from the combat sports community Joe Rogan expressed strong feelings about the result, saying that Fury's victory over Francis was anything but simple. Despite Fury's difficult battle throughout, Gypsy King managed to escape with a victory, having survived a serious scare in the third round when Francis knocked him to the ground. Following the match, Fury conducted a frank interview in which he acknowledged Francis's surprising challenge, but this candor did little to help him edge out the victory on the judges' scorecards. Many quickly branded Fury's victory as embarrassing, citing the close margin and Francis's decision to make the move, in an attempt to cool the controversy that many felt Fury's performance was dull. Francis, on the other hand, won huge appreciation from the MA community for his ability to go the entire distance in his professional boxing debut, defeating the WBC World Heavyweight Champion. Many believed that Francis should have been declared the winner after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best boxers in the sport, despite having no prior professional boxing experience. Joe Rogan was quite vocal about his decision to fight, especially after his remarkable performance and the important moments he experienced during the music battle. Rogan, the popular podcast host, did not hold back his displeasure that Francis had never had a chance to win and that he should have won, criticizing the judge who gave Fury the decision, 9693. According to Rogan, he has never participated in a boxing bout. However, he did become the UFC heavyweight title and defeated Tyson Fury in the third round. Appraisal represented the opinions of many spectators who thought Francis's performance was nothing short of extraordinary. Rogan continued what most people, including myself, believed he should have prevailed in the ruling, including the majority of fighters and boxing commentators.
He was defeated by one point on one judge's scorecard, while another judge who ought to be imprisoned had it 9693. The abrasive remarks made by Rogan proved useful in light of the general discontent with the judge's decision in the fight, since many of us believed that Francis's efforts and essential moments, especially the knockout and his supremacy in the eighth round, which ought to have won him the victory, Rogan also emphasized the anticipations we had before the fight. Believing that Fury, the heavyweight boxing champion, would run him over and that there was no way this kid could compete with him. Before the fight, Fury even declared it was time to head back to school. Afterwards, Francis remarked, at the conclusion of the fight, you are a lousy professor. Little different, little different. I mean, he doesn't give a what his physique looks like. The amazement and appreciation for Francis's ability to hold his own against Fury was conveyed in this comment fighter. He beats Vladimir Klitschko, he becomes a champion, then loses his mind. Changing the highly competitive contest that many believe to be a mismatch into something that none of us saw coming after Alexander Usyk's spectacular. After beating Tyson Fury, the boxing world was abuzz with rumors of a possible rematch, although while Fury was adamant that he had won the battle, he admitted the close nature of. Fury freely discussed the aftermath of the incident, pointing out the geopolitical background that his country is at war, meaning people are. I believed I had won the battle, but I'm not going to cry. After fleeing with our families in support of the nation during the war, we will undoubtedly return in October. We'll rest then resume our work. The fight's relevance for the undisputed heavyweight title was in doubt, thus Usyk declined to commit right away to a rematch. Instead, he made excuses. In light of his ordeal and the wider ramifications of his triumph, U.S. Geik stated, Since 2008, I have been preparing for this. It was a big step. He also called for required defenses from other rated challengers. Chance for me and my nation? Slava, Ukraine. It's a wonderful day and moment, not because of my victory, but because of my God, my country's supporters, the Ukrainian warriors, and my mother and father. Duh. Children, I want to go home, rest, eat, sleep, kiss my wife. The fighters' recovery time, including whether or not they were hospitalized following the fight, will also determine when any possible rematch takes place. Said by Fury himself that he believed the fight had resulted in a broken jaw. Fury discussed their taxing encounter by stating, We've just had a fight, as you can see with my face, I'm pretty. We went to the hospital after punching each other 12 times, breaking both of our jaws, and ending up busted. We will now go home, eat, spend time with our families, and take a walk as a family. Dog leave the area? and Frank and I will discuss what will happen coming forward. Nevertheless, a rematch clause they agreed before to their first meeting assured them of another meeting in October. Signed their calendars as the month of reckoning fury, his eyes puffy but resolute, saying, we'll rest up then run it back equally resolute and covered in blood, he nodded in accord. Being 6 x fury fought in an unusual, unconventional manner that displayed astonishing agility. The fight had been a clash of dissimilar styles, but fury was ready for another CL clash. Though six in a superb technical, Yusek used deceptive power to keep opponents off balance. In the rematch, both fighters relied on precise footwork and rapid strategic movements. Would require modifications Fury, who was always flexible, would improve his strategy, making his wild swings more deliberate and his feints intended to trick Yusek into falling into traps he would stretch out to look for areas of vulnerability, much like the chess player we all saw in the ring, he would also adjust, making his already excellent footwork even more accurate. In their first fight, Ulik's left hook severely injured Fury's nose. Although Fury accepted the damage as a badge of honor, countermeasures would be more cunning and would take advantage of any aggression from Fury. Redemption would use the memory of the blood and agony to drive his preparations, living out that moment repeatedly during training, a fact that his squad would never stop reminding him of. In the ninth round, which almost lost him the fight, Yusik also recalled that punch with a feeling of success rather than pride because it was a pivotal moment that helped define his performance and even though he acknowledged Fury's tenacity and acknowledged the Gypsy King's strength, which caused Yusik's ribs to hurt from the body blows that suggested, I'm still here. Due to Fury's reputation for showmanship, the rematch would be as much of a psychological war as a physical one. Yusik's team would research Fury's psychological strategies in an effort to spot any warning signals. While Fury's staff worked to keep him believing in himself and reminded him that he had been close to victory before the heavyweight boxing division established, Fury himself would be free from doubt or confidence. While Tyson and Alexander have excitedly changed the heavyweight category, where do they and the entire division go from here? Fury is at a crossroads, and there are rumblings of retirement. 
The allure of Undisputed Glory might be too great for him to resist in a rematch with Yusik the Superstar, despite his assertions that he wants to concentrate on his family and his professional wrestling career. If Fury were to defeat the tactical Yusik and become the unified WBA, IBF, and WBO champion for undisputed dominance, this bout would be a huge moneymaker, but could he change his tactics too? Pick a long-term strategy that would keep him focused while he builds his brand, handles simpler defenses, and waits for a profitable chance in the future. Competing with a rested and resentful opponent in two or three years could be a terrible prospect for any challenger, but there's a chance that going this way could make him vulnerable too. A full-fledged WWE career or high-profile movie agreements could be too alluring to pass up, but this path may cause ring rust and leave a legacy tinted with what-if concerns. Fury's charisma is evident. Could have serious repercussions, spend a lot of time outside the ring, cause ring rust, and perhaps leave a legacy of unrealized promise, like the undersized heavyweight with Remarkable. The Cat must now plan his next move as he faces Fury for unification, which is the most prominent route but there are other candidates. Speed and technique exceeded expectations by defeating the Giants. The should heavyweight unification prove difficult to achieve, Yuskike, who is still dangerous due to his knockout power, could serve as a stepping stone. Should the weight prove too much? Might a historic comeback to a packed cruiserweight division occur? Yusik might also do on a tour of mandatory defenses to cement his reign and create a. The heavyweight champion's reputation would be cemented by his dominant style, which future champions could try to imitate. However, the excitement generated by a matchup with Deontay Wilder, a former dominant force who may return hungry for victory, is one opponent in the heavyweight division that Fury is preparing for while the Fury Usyk saga carries on. The uncertainty that has followed him since his defeats to the tough British fighter Fury Joe Joyce and the Russian fighter Philip Hergov.